Well, not exactly how I remember it. I think there were a few different versions of that intro, but um, so this is IndyCar Racing 2. Welcome back to my channel. Um, something kind of different, and I had put up one video of this before, uh, but figured, I don't know, I got the, the bug to do it, been watching some old IndyCar races again, and decided maybe to make a video uh, of this old sim made in uh, 1995 by the uh, Papyrus Group at the time, which uh, are now first in the iRacing folks. Um, you know, of course, IndyCar racing in the early 90s in America was extremely popular. Um, you know, as popular as NASCAR today or um, F1 in many places of the world. And actually, F1 at the time was kind of afraid that um, IndyCar was going to become more popular than uh, than itself. So, um, unfortunately. Uh, for people that really loved IndyCar, uh, they kind of shot themselves in the foot and uh, split up. But that is a um, conversation for a different day, and <laughs> I won't take that into here. Uh, I just want to enjoy this awesome sim. This is like my first sim um, that I ever played, and I raced this for hours and hours and hours um, when I was younger. Uh, came out in 1995, like I said, and it originally uh, kind of simulated the 1995 season. Um, in the uh, official version, there was no Indianapolis track, which is kind of surprising, but I think that had something to do with all of the contract issues that were going on. And I think this game was actually re-released um, in early 1996 as kart racing uh, after the IndyCar and kart split. So it kind of has an interesting history. Um, but this is uh, IndyCar Racing 2 at its best. I have a bunch of extra tracks loaded into it and uh, car sets and things. Um, this is the DOS version of the game, and I'm playing it on DOS Box, um, which uh, kind of emulates a DOS machine. machine. So uh, you're able to play these old games. It actually is working pretty well. Uh, it took me a little while to get my controls configured and the graphics configured right. Have a little bit of slowdown on frame rates when you have like the whole field in front of you. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it runs pretty great. And just getting used to how these old sims drive, of course, 1995, this is before force feedback was a thing. Um, so getting used to how that feels and having a wheel that's always kind of the constant weight, um, you have to really get used to listening when the car is sliding. Um, so sound is actually very, very important. Um, you don't get too much of a sense of like what your car is doing, but once you spend some time with it, it actually actually becomes pretty fun. And we'll see if I can you know, do a good job here. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to dive into the menus too much, but um, so this is a car set I have downloaded for the 1994 uh, IndyCar season. I've been watching some, I uh, mentioned watching some 1994 IndyCar races. Um, so I had just downloaded it, but there's, I mean, every year through the 80s and 90s is well represented, even into the 2000s, um, but definitely the early 90s is where this, this sim shines, and you know, if it's something people would want to see, I don't know how popular this will be, obviously, graphics aren't great in this game, um, biggest problem is the resolution, it doesn't go higher than, I think it's 6, 640 by 480, so it's really uh, not good. But uh, I think they're, you know, it's early 90s, you can forgive it. Um, and it's definitely a major nostalgia for people that had played it. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, if, if it's something people would want to see in like a Let's Race, um, I could do a career or something. I know everybody wants more Grand Prix Legends and I'll get to it. <laughs> but uh, I think this would just be fun for today. So I was thinking we'll do a short uh, race. We got the list of tracks here. Um, I got pretty much just the stock tracks, a couple extra ones like the uh, Bicentennial Park Circuit from Miami. This is pretty much the 1995 track season. Um, and a few of them are upgraded. There's a really, I mean, so this is a game that's very old, doesn't look very good, um, you know, compared to modern standards, but it still has a community. Uh, and these days, the last few years, it's been getting a little slower, but um, I mean, there's still people making car sets for the current seasons and upgrading tracks, and there's a couple guys that uh, in recent years just upgraded all of the tracks. Uh, so I think I have quite a few of those installed, um, but I was thinking maybe we'd do a short race around Long Beach. Um, 
So I'll load this up here. Go to the garage. So this is, I mean, it's a full simulation, and honestly, it's it's um, built off a lot of the same stuff, like uh, some of the earlier NASCAR ones were, uh, like NASCAR three, two, and three. Um, so I mean, it's pretty much that just in for Indy cars, and it's it's really awesome. But yeah, you can adjust anything. Um, anything you'd want to make your car better. I've never been much of a setup guru. I need to get better at it. Uh, but um, definitely definitely allows for whatever whatever changes you'd want. So um, on road courses, qualifying is just like an open practice session. So I figure maybe I'll load that up, do a couple laps. It's only 10 minutes, maybe we'll do the whole thing. Um, so as you can see, the graphics aren't terrific. Don't believe there is a speed limit in the pits. But yeah, definitely major nostalgia with this. So we'll roll out here. You can see the dash is actually very representative of these uh, early 90s Indy cars. If you ever see pictures of them. But we got, uh, I think it's lapsed fuel. And I know there's a way to change that, but um, not exactly sure how. Uh, then we got our miles per hour. You can change your boost settings to save fuel. Um, you get your lap counter down there. So, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's a pretty great sim. Um, and I'm surprised once you get your your settings dialed in how good it does feel. So I'm gonna let these two quicker cars go by me. I'm gonna punch it. So I've done uh, like five or ten laps, just making sure the sim works all right. Forgive me if I'm awful. And I got the AI set up. I, I even remembered <laughs> from, I mean, I probably haven't touched this really since the late 90s. And I remembered I used to run with the AI at like 95%. So that's what I set them to. Let's see if I have some competition here. Oh, getting a little squirrely through that corner. And I guess I haven't said much about the track, Long Beach, uh, very famous. So I'm going kind of side by side here with a car that gets Scott Goodyear. Long Beach, very famous street course in America. Of course, uh, getting a little sideways there. Of course, holding the Formula One uh, West Coast Grand Prix for many years. And when that left, when they moved on from their IndyCar cart and took it over, started running races were very popular uh, and of course after the series reunited in 2008 the Long Beach Grand Prix was added to the schedule for both um, and you always I mean even this past year 2014 you can tell it's one of the best supported races you know, besides the Indy 500 on the calendar it's got full grandstands it's just a big party with many support races to go along with it so it's always a pretty pretty cool thing. We still have around this track layout. Uh, it's changed a bit over the years. Um, this isn't, I think, F, well, I don't think F1 ran this layout at all. Um, and it's been updated since, I think, in the mid to late 90s. Had the fountain corners and stuff. So this is actually a much shorter version of the track than is run today, but not quite as long. Uh, or today's isn't quite as long as what F1 ran originally. So it definitely had many iterations, but Shoreline Drive, that front straightaway, that we'll go back on in just a second, and the final hairpin corner here. This final right-hand corner are two of the you know, historic sections that have been maintained. Get around the slower car here. So I am able to use my wheel with this. Um, I don't believe it supports you know, having a brake and throttle pressed at the same time. So I've actually just been using my uh, right foot only for gas and brake. Since you're not able, able to overlap. I'll just get around this lap. I'm going to try one flyer here. Set my qualifying time. Now you do have, there are menus. So you can see uh, different statistics about your cars and change your setup stuff. Um, kind of fill up too much of the screen. So I'll, uh, I'll leave them off for now. And you get a pit board every time you go by. Um, kind of like in Grand Prix Legends, but you don't have to select it. It just comes up by itself and uh, 
get all the info you would need for your lap times and qualifying, I think. Alright, so let's try to put a good lap together here. Boy, <laughs> we've blown the engine. Uh, so, it's one thing that's really easy to do. I think I probably over revved it when we go back to watch the video. Uh, we'll see. But once you get too high in revs, you do blow the engine. So, so much for that qualifying time. But I think I'd already turned a couple laps here. So let's look at the standings, how we were doing. Richie Axelson in 13th. Well, that's lucky. Um, I can't believe I blew the engine there. That was really funny. But I'll have to watch that in our little race we're going to do. Um, so there's 31 cars here. Um, so this is just the 1994 car set, so there's, I know you can make it more, I could make it more historic and have just the drivers that competed and stuff, but I figured, uh, just for now, that'd be fun to do with just, uh, this group of people. So, uh, why don't we advance it to the, uh, next section, uh, session, and, uh, we'll do the actual race. So it's, I think it's just a 10 lap race, um, and we'll have one pace lap before, which can get a little hectic with the AI, but hopefully they're they're good. And then we'll try to make it through a 10 lap race here without blowing our engine. Um, I might have just been distracted, but uh, we'll see here. So, why don't we get started with this um, 1994, I guess, Long Beach mini fun race. All right, so on the grid and roll away right away. Here we do our pace lap around Long Beach. Not too long of a track, so it shouldn't be too, too long. Um, of course, in IndyCar racing, it's always a rolling start, or typically. I think they're trying to do standing starts now, and they're not going so well. But uh, historically, IndyCar racing is a rolling start. Um, so we'll just do one pace lap. I think in real life they do three or four. But we'll just do one pace lap here and then get the green flag and hope that we don't fly into a million pieces into the first corner with all the other cars. Um, the AI, although uh, I think it's really good actually for being from 1995, but um, the AI does bunch up, especially in these opening laps and the pace lap, you have to be really careful. I also have to be really careful not to blow my engine. I don't think I could go much higher than 13,000 RPM. Um, I shouldn't, so I'm just gonna remember to shift properly. I don't know, for some reason I've always had problems get, getting a feel for the shifting in this um, and when to do it. Just, uh, I find it really easy to blow the engine as we saw um, and I'll get, definitely check back the video to to see if I was over revving it. I hope I was um, so it wasn't a you know, problem with my car setup or something but we'll come through this final corner and we'll get the green flag and hope that everything goes smoothly here with this fun race at Long Beach and the green flag. Put a little space, well, so if we get a checkup like that, and we'll come through the famous corner here to get underway down into the first corner. Oh, breaking very early, hard on the brakes up the inside. Hopefully, pick up a couple spots and, oh, and give a tap there to the Pennzoil car. Somebody to my inside. Rudimentary mirrors make it a little difficult to sense what's going on behind you. But yes, things finally getting single file as we'll come down to this fast portion in the back straight away. Let her sing, make sure we're shifting at the correct spots. I'm breaking a little early probably, but I'm not sure how how far up the AI will be breaking, so Oh, and they're slowing down quite a bit here through the final couple corners. Very racy overall. We're trying to get a good run onto this front straightaway. Alongside here, that Pennzoil car. It's a little bit, have a little more top speed. I think I had chosen the uh, easy setup, so it might be a little heavy on downforce. Um, Speed might be slightly down. Fighting here side by side. Oh, I'm cutting it close to the walls. Of course, here, city street track. Not much room for error. We're able to get around him. And now we'll fly down to the back straightaway. 
definitely, once you see past the graphics, which were amazing for the time, once you see past those, you can have a lot of fun with this, with this sim. There's not enough IndyCar racing out there in, in sims. Um, running a little wide through the hairpin there, I was trying to make a move. It's Robert Boisel in front of me. I know some of the drivers um, from years past. Of course, I was a big IndyCar fan, still am, uh, but I don't know all of them. So I'm going to the first corner, breaking heavy again. cars up ahead. I wonder if that's it's either Mario Andretti or Nigel Mansell. Yes, Nigel Mansell, if you didn't know, is the F1 world champion raced IndyCar for a few seasons in the early 90s. Probably was one of the reasons it became so popular. Um, won the world championship, I think, in 1993 or 1992 and then said see ya to F1 and joined IndyCar in America. His history going up the inside here into the hairpin, trying to get a good run off of it. Scoot in front of the car behind me. And he's coming back on the outside, take a late break into the first corner, down into first gear there. Keep things nice and steady. There's Robbie Gordon in front of us. The now stadium super truck star. He was an IndyCar driver at first, like all the good ones. So we're doing pretty good so far. I don't think I really lost any spots on the start. I think I probably gained some. And now we're making our way up. I'll take a, I haven't really looked at the pit board as we're going by yet distracted with the driving, making sure not to blow the engine. So let's take a look here. P11 with six laps to go. Not bad. Let's see if we can get up into the top ten here. in my last video but for this it works I'm um, using a new way to record video so hopefully it looks good um, if you're watching this it at least it at least looks good enough for me to, to share it but uh, I really love the quality of fraps it just sucks up so much space um, videos for just a minute and a half are, are about four gigabytes in size um, so very quickly you can run out of space even though I've got 500 gigs for video storage, sometimes with the GPL stuff that was very close to not enough. Looks like I might have found 
on my pocket of speed. Oh, it's running very wide through the final corner. I wonder if he had a problem. That's pretty interesting. Going around Robbie Gordon then, up into 10th position. We'll look in front with three laps to go to the number one car, which, yes, that is Nigel Mansell. So let's see if we can pull a little quick one here on old Nigel. One of the more interesting characters, I think, uh, to ever turn a wheel. Not many people would quit F1 right after they win the world championship. Ah, oh, and gutted gearbox failure. Uh, there are breakdowns you can have, although I'm not sure that's how gearbox failures really work. Oh, we're seeing a yellow flag, though. Um, full course yellow flag here in IndyCar, but ah, uh, car not running at all anymore, so more like an engine failure, I think. Um, and I'm just rolling back towards the pits. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not, but that seems to be the end of the race there, so nothing I could do with the gearbox failing. <laughs> that is the end of the race for me, so we'll press exit there. Now, I'm not sure, uh, why don't we take a look, so we'll look at a replay here. Um, you've got pretty cool replay tools uh, in, in IndyCar racing. So we'll start uh, back here or something, just watch for a couple minutes, I guess. See, what, see if we can spot anything that would have happened. Uh, but I think it was just a random failure that sometimes happens in racing. Uh, but one of those things that does make the sim interesting. So we were coming on to the back straightaway here, and the car just cuts out. And it's a gearbox failure. It says, I think gearbox failures generally would mean you'd get stuck in a gear. Um, but maybe that wasn't quite in the modeling back in 1995. Uh, but nevertheless, it was an interesting race while it lasted. Um, and I don't know if there is a way to simulate the end of the race. Uh, so we can see who won. Yeah, it just stops there. Back up to the menu here. And look at the standings, maybe? So we were, well it's showing us in 18th, but we were right behind Nigel Mansell. So we were, yeah, we were in 10th place just having passed Robbie Gordon there. Um, and I don't think there's a way to accelerate the race. If, if you're watching this and you know how to do that, please let me know. That'd be cool, but um, I absolutely gutted there to see a race end like that. And no, we won't save that race weekend. So... That is IndyCar Racing 2 uh, from 1995. Uh, my first sim, and definitely have a lot of fun with it, even, even with the random breakdowns. Um, you know, of course, IndyCar races on all kinds of tracks, ovals and road courses, street courses. Um, so running like a season is really fun because there's lots of different, different kinds of racing going on. Uh, but that's all for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please let me know. and. Uh, be sure to post something again soon.